Hey everybody, welcome back to A New Way to Museum. I'm Reese Barrick here at the Sternberg Museum of Natural History on the set of Sahara Sea Monsters. Um, our traveling exhibit that we have here this summer um, from Silver Plume. And there's just so many cool things to talk about. And as we get into it, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, it really helps us out. We enjoy having you here with us every Thursday. So, what are these cool, awesome things that I'm sitting between? Well, we've got a couple of armored fish um, that were around swimming in Morocco uh, in the Devonian. So we're talking about 360 to 380 million years ago for these fish. So that's a long time ago. Um, they're giant, they're awesome, they're cool, and they lived in a time called the Age of Fish. So fish were getting extremely diverse at this time. The oceans were teeming with these sorts of fish. Um, and they're called, these cool fish, they look kind of bizarre because they have giant armor all over their heads and their thorax, They're, you know, basically cr over their shoulders and chest. So uh, these armored fish are in a group called placoderms, which means uh, platy, scaly skin. So, um, which is kind of interesting, but these particular um, placoderms had armor that covered their skulls and the first half of their body. And then the, their tails didn't have any of this armor, so they were just normal fish scales to sort of naked skin. Um, so what you find in the fossil record are these giant armored pieces, um, which is kind of cool. Now this armor is actually um, bones, plates that were actually dermal. They were actually grown in the skin. There was actually an internal skeleton inside of this. So they had a normal skeleton and then they had um, armor in the skin with skin sitting on top of this armor. Um, and so they're a little bit kind of like scutes on crocodiles. So he had this sort of dermal armor, which made them very, uh, you know, well protected and also may have been places where they could store phosphorus and calcium for internal metabolic things for swimming around. But these guys got to be giants and they were also kind of cool because um, they also belong to a group called nathostomes, which means jawed fish. So these were, these were placoderms, but they were also nathostomes. They were the first placoderms sort of to have jaws. So these guys have jaws, and that's kind of an important thing because it gives you all kinds of new ways to eat. Um, and so that's kind of neat. But when these guys, these particular fish got jaws, they didn't get any teeth. So there had not been the development of these teeth with enamel and dentin that get deeply rooted inside of a jaw like we have. Fancy teeth. These guys don't have that. They just have jaw bones that were exposed. And this particular guy had uh, these jaws that were just bones on the upper jaw and the lower jaw and they would crush and, and capture things to eat. That's kind of cool. So this particular guy is called Dunkelosteus. And we're gonna talk about a few funny things here because a lot of you see these kind of cool fish and you might jump on and, and look and say, how do you pronounce that? And you gotta be careful because if you go on the internet, almost every time you hit something like this, it'll say Dunkleosteus, Dunkleosteus. But the reality, because either everybody's trying to put a little Latin, because these are, are Latinized names, but this fish was named after a guy named David Dunkel, who worked at the uh, uh, Cincinnati Museum. Um, Cleveland Museum, sorry. Um, what's interesting about it, then, is this thing was named after a person, and his name is Dunkel. So it's not Dunkleosteus, it's Dunkleosteus. The osteus 
meaning bone. So it's actually Dunkel's bone, this whole fish. So it's kind of neat because it's got a cool name. And it's got these massive jaws. And you think, eh, it's an early fish. It's one of these first fish with jaws. How cool could that be? Well, if you think about it, these guys were some of the ama most amazing predators because if you're this size, you got to eat things that are large. What other large things can they eat? Well, they could eat other large fish that also happen to have all this dermal armor because they're also placoderms. So you have to be able to puncture that. And Dunkelosteus did it extremely well. What's kind of interesting is on top of the skull, there's this big space between the, the plates and there's huge muscles that attach up here. And these huge muscles are able to yank the skull back as a, and pull the jaw down to give it a gape or it can open its mouth like up to 45 degrees. And it could do that with this complex mechanism extremely rapidly. So it gets a wide gape, can, and when it does that, it did it within like 50 milliseconds. So by opening its mouth that quickly, that wide, it's basically like a suction feeder. It would suck a fish inside, and then it slams it down to crush through the armor of the other fish. Or if it didn't have armor, it would just rip it apart. And it had a bite force out here of out here at the edge of something like 18,000 pounds per square inch, right? The only thing that had a, a, a stronger bite force was a megalodon. So this is in the age of fishes, 380 million years ago, and you've got this giant fish with a big gape and could crush everything. That's, that's kind of cool. So that's something that's got some serious jaws and some serious power. Um, on the other side here, we also have an armored fish. This cool guy is called Titanichthys. It's a titan, right? It's also a giant. But you'll notice something interesting. Similarly, it's got this big uh, gap, a gape here, that has also some large muscles. But you look at the jaws and there are no sharpened edges of jaws on the bottom or the top, suggesting it wasn't actually munching on as a carnivore, but on lots of other giant fish. It actually was probably still a carnivore. But the bones are very thin down here, the lower jaws. And so this guy could get a wide gape. But with this wide gape and no teeth, and no strong jaws, it probably was like just swimming around, kind of being a filter feeder, or just open around. And if it swam through schools of small fish, they would just get sucked in. And it would just swim around with its mouth open, um, swallowing whatever it could, could sort of feed. So this would be like a giant armored early filter feeder, like a basking shark um, or a whale shark or a mysticete whale. So, kind of cool. So we've got, in the age of fishes, we've got these placoderms that are evolving into these giant carnivores and these giant filter feeders. <coughs> and what we don't have here is there were some of these guys that were sort of in between that had, did not have this type of jaw, had big jaws here, but instead of being very thin, they were flat and wide and powerful. And they were probably what we call durophagus, which means they probably ate shell animals that they could crunch, um, just like we see in some fish and uh, some very uh, fun sharks from the Cretaceous. So we've got things that could eat shells, things that could filter feed, and things that were really great carnivores, all in the Devonian. 360 to 380 million years ago. It was truly the age of fish. Um, and again, a cool time when these guys had jaws. And a lot of fish earlier in the beginning of the Devonian 
didn't have jaws. They were just swimming around, truly just filter feeding. Um, and those fish, and this is another fun thing, that's an interesting science thing and pronunciation thing as we are, are English. I said these were naphastomes because they have jaws. So the fish that didn't have jaws, most people, when you look it up, and everybody said it, are called agnathans. But is it really agnathans? You don't pronounce the G when you have naphastomes. So the fish, these fish with, without jaws were anathans, just like you could be a theist and believe in God or lots of gods or an atheist. You put the A in front to mean don't believe, right? So a naphastome has jaws, an anaphid would not have jaws. Um, in the, the early church, there were the Gnostics, the ones having knowledge. And then some people say, well, I'm agnostic. No, you're not really agnostic, you're agnostic. That's kind of the way this is supposed to go. So science, pronunciations of things, it's kind of fun. Some of the things that we just assume because we read the agnostic or the agnathan first without understanding that the G is not pronounced when you use it in the original word. So cool. Naphastomes, placoderms, uh, and living in the age of fish. A kind of cool, scary time to be in the oceans and I'm Reese Barrick. I think it's been a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed it, um, visiting with my friends. You get a chance again sometime. Find Sahara Sea Monsters at a museum near you. You're definitely going to want to check this out. Um, so we will see you again next Thursday here at the Sternberg on a new way to museum. Thanks for joining us in a new way to museum with the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. If you enjoyed this video, like it and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell for notifications when we release a new video. Support us on Patreon for early access and exclusive content. You can also follow us on all our social media. Links are found in the description. Thanks for watching and follow your curiosity to new discoveries.